mu chat ko if live na thank Living up to its mission to be an architect of change, the Ramon Aboitis Foundation Incorporated comes to aid by setting up the stage for collaboration in hopes of reaching more people, touching more lives, transforming more communities for the better. I'm Pinky Webb, and this is the all-new season of Business Matters, where doing good is good business. The year comes to a close with nations still grappling with responding to the COVID-19 crisis and its severe impacts on our lives. Largely hitting metropolitan areas like the National Capital Region and parts of Central Visayas. First and foremost, we thought that we have what it takes to really address the, uh, the problem. But then again, uh, just like the virus, it's also evolved, no? And then it's getting bigger, so uh, our hospitals then were overwhelmed. The magnitude of the pandemic and its overwhelming toll on healthcare workers and other heroes on the front lines were factors for placing Cebu City under the longest lockdown. Everything that is related to COVID, we have to treat it urgency because of the of the system that we are trying to put up with the synergy, and then we're quite very efficient about it. But during these unsettling times, the communities themselves work together and serve as a safety net for Cebuanos, where local government units, private sectors, and non-government organizations, particularly the Ramon Aboides Foundation, or RAFI, had to come together to support each other. Well, the impact of the COVID-19 crisis 
was unprecedented, and it still is. We have decided to respond to this crisis. With over 54 years of serving as architects of change, touching lives, elevating the dignity of people, Rafi strives to shape the future through solutions that enable people to achieve higher levels of well-being. Since the complexity and the impact of the various disasters have really been increasing over the past years, the Humanitarian Disaster Preparedness and Response or HDPR program of RAFI was developed. The HDPR program upholds the foundation's 3R framework, relief, recovery, and rehabilitation that comes with preparedness in its disaster response. At the height of the COVID cases here in Cebu, there were around 200 to 250 ambulance runs during the day. And we partnered with DOH, Subnational Blood Center for the Visayas, as well as the Office of the Presidential Advisor for Visayas. We brought in also AROF, the Emergency Rescue Unit Foundation, as well as RIAVO, the Radio and Rescue Emergency Assistance Volunteer Group, to be able to provide free ambulances to COVID patients all over Cebu Island. The total budget allotted for HDPR COVID-19 initiatives amounted to 265 million pesos. This also included the distribution of relief goods through the Adopt a Barangay program, the provision of PPEs, free shuttle, and free accommodation for frontliners, mobile blood letting drive. We were able to gather around 1,700 plus blood bags. And in fact, the OH has um, just informed us that they are even supplying the blood needs of um, the other regions because we now have enough supply. Rafi also conducted an information drive, the Comunidad Contra COVID Communication Campaign, and provided portable hand washing stations for barangays. A small move that was greatly appreciated because it heightened their awareness on the importance of hygiene to prevent COVID spread. Sabi ng Rafi na magbigay kami ng uh, portable no? na washing or wash hands. So at least nung mga tao na intindihan na nila kung anong dapat gawin, anong mga basic na pag-alcontra ng uh, coronavirus. And to attract more people into participating in the hand-washing activities, the trucks also came with a catchy jingle. Even the people most vulnerable to COVID-19 infection, homeless and the street dwellers were not left out. We partnered with the Santo Nino Agustinian Foundation. They actually had existing feeding program for the homeless, but um, this time, um, uh, during the lockdown, we expanded that partnership and um, we focused on the homeless and the street dwellers. And to keep the kids entertained, they partnered with volunteer social workers who conducted activities to prevent children from wandering around. Through this, Cebuanos can look forward to better days ahead as they strive to flatten the curve and gradually restart the economy. Rest assured that the Ramon Aboitis Foundation Incorporated will continue working with heroes on the front lines, touching people, saving lives, and shaping the future. God Almighty, thank you for bringing us together during this unprecedented and challenging time. We ask that as we move forward as a community into the next normal, you give us the strength, patience, and wisdom needed to overcome these trials and rise above the pandemic. We pray for our present-day heroes who are on the front lines fighting against the virus. Those who have become sick and those who have died May they have eternal rest. For those of us who are holding on to hope, please give us the grace to never give up. Dearest God, 
heal our land. Amen. Hi, good afternoon. Maayong udto ka natong tanan. Thank you for joining us today, no, and welcome to the episode 11 of Rafi's Restart webinar series. I'm so pumped and I'm so excited to host today's webinar. My name is Prince and I work for the Ramon Aboides Foundation Incorporated, also known as Rafi. This Restart webinar series is aligned with uh, Rafi's vision of touching people and shaping the future. So we are now in our 11th episode, and we would like to thank all of our loyal viewers who have been with us since last year, 2020, for since the very episode of our Restart webinar in the last uh, July. In, um, in our episodes, we've covered topics ranging from taking care of our, your physical health, your mental health, and also we've discussed how to jumpstart your uh, businesses, how to prepare for traveling and school in the new normal. Our intention really is to really have been to ensure that we are all equipped with the right knowledge that we are that we continue to be to inspire and not lose hope amidst the pandemic so we can put put our best foot forward as we continue to venture into the new normal. So today um, I hope you're excited as much as I am so today we'll be talking about keep creative during COVID. People say creativity is sometimes seen as um, nice to do when you have the time luxury. Yeah, this is probably not an urgent need not to maximize your creativity, uh, to respond as resourcefully as possible to, to the pandemic, to COVID-19. need to be responding to the immediate demands of the crisis, facing a different situation, you will need to think different. We need to think different. And I'm very thankful to our speaker for today's episode for accepting our invitation. So he is an internationally acclaimed multidisciplinary creative with works including sculptures, space installation, portraiture, and fashion among others. A trash and artist, he pioneered contemporary couture trash and art in the Philippines and is known for his contemporary takes on upcycling garbage into wearable art. He creates pieces and uh, insulation made from non-toxic, non-organic, industrial and residential garbage. He also partners with commercial institution that allows his team to raise environmental awareness and design pieces which are produced by economically depressed uh, regions. So, and he also an executive director of Youth for Livable Cebu. And as a director, he focuses on environmental and uh, civic causes. His campaign on climate change and urban sustainability has become an inspiration for other communities to conduct their own programs. So wow, that's a very long introduction for just a one person and I am already amazed. And uh, before we'll go to our speaker, you know, by the way, for those tuning in right now on our Facebook Live, don't forget to comment your questions in the comment section below for our live Q&A later. So So let us hear it from Sir Francis Soliano. A wonderful afternoon to everyone and thank you to Ramon Abaitis Foundation Incorporated for the kind invitation for us to be able to share our story on how we were trying to be creative, how the Francis Soliano creative team tried to adjust and is currently adjusting with, with, with the times. It has been very difficult and so our thoughts and prayers are with everybody, with everyone, with their families who, who has been or who are suffering and experiencing the, the financial, the personal effects of this pandemic. And so we are now towards the end of the Philippine Arts Month of February. And so here's our little story of how we were being creative during these months. And so here's a little, so uh, I just like to uh, ask everybody, how, how is everyone, uh, how are you at home? Are you doing fine? I hope, I hope everybody is doing fine and I hope everybody is healthy as well. So we've, we've been quite familiar that I've 
been born and raised and currently based here in Cebu, Philippines, a tropical island paradise. So this is this is an Im image of of what Cebu will always be for a lot of us. It's a tropical island paradise, and it it rightfully is so. Uh, that is me uh, in in my pensive mode in our provincial home, and I've always been that curious about what there is beyond the 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 sphere of my environment and and i've always been pensive let's say or so to say and this is me and my sister uh in our provincial home uh we love being with nature we love we love playing outdoors and it has been quite normal for my family to be with nature. And you see in the background, we are outdoors playing. And so we love going out. We love, we love being there with nature always. And, we've, and that's very normal for our family. And I guess that has contributed to, to my growth, uh, to how I am very attuned to nature now as an adult. And I am so glad to have grown in a family that is very appreciative of our gifts, of the bounties that the natural environment has given us. And so I found it also encouraging for myself to, to do something for the environment as an artist. My personal voice as an artist has always been about creating pieces or creating works that evoke emotions out of our natural environments to create questions that encourage people to think about how do we relate ourselves or how are we interconnected with the entire sphere of our natural environment and so i guess it is very much reflective of my works uh, these are what I've been known for, uh, which is wearable art, or which is trash or trash fashion, which I guess started uh, my journey into this creative works, uh, creative um, sphere. And so these are made out of uh, garbage plastics. Uh, it was a work together with Christine Mendez and we created this avant-garde textured fabric out of uh out of garbage plastic or out of uh garbage grocery bags and so it continued on creating wearable pieces or wearable art pieces made out of shredded uh tarpaulins or tarpaulins or uh shredded plastics i've always been working with plastics because I've had, I have this thought long time ago that we have to rethink about our attitude towards plastics. Uh, siguro yung mga atong mga friends na they have plastic or friends of plastic, we have to rethink on how we, we work on this dimension of, 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 of plastics and whatnot. And so, uh, and so this is also single-use plastic drinking straws. Even before, I've always had this strong feeling against drinking straws if you don't need them uh, for your health, for your health purposes. So you could always drink uh, soda or water without drinking straws unless you don't want imohang lipstick to, 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 to smear on, on the drinking glass. So then go ahead, fine, use a drinking straw. But if you don't need it, then please, then please don't use it. Think of the turtles and the fish, the fishes that are going to, uh, going to be with those drinking straws. You could never know where your drinking straw will end up. Will they end up in the landfill or will they end up into our seas? So that's always a good question to ask. And so working with garbage and trash and wearable art, I've always wanted to, to ask 
like this uh, uh, dress, it, does it look like a coral, resembles like a coral? And how do we treat our marine environment with all these plastics? And even this, we move forward to modernity or, 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 or towards technologies on creating how we're so advanced now, should we say, compared to 10 years ago with, with our technologies, but then how have we treated or used technology in order to work with garbage or with our plastics? Have we researched enough in order to create opportunities for new innovations of new materials? And so that is something that I always try to discover or ask or question about our things. And so uh, much of my work, again, is very attributed to our natural environments. It's very, it speaks a lot about, about nature. And so I guess this has become the foundation of, of my work as a whole. And so we go back now to the COVID period. We go back to what has caused COVID-19 pandemic. And a lot of articles have been saying that this has been happening because of our disrespect to our natural environment. That we are starting to, to destroy na nature in a way that has, that has disregarded its natural laws. And so the destruction of our, of our na of biodiversity, the destruction of rainforests has released these viruses in such a way that is harmful now for us humans in, in large scale. Previously, we have released viruses because of our inherent need for, to, destroy, to destroy our forests, but they were always contained. Now, we are seeing global scale release of viruses because of, we question again, is it because we have destroyed our their the homes of these viruses? And so now I go back to the question: How have we then become creative in the time of COVID? And I would like to give or shine light to our campaign, the Art to Heal campaign, or the hashtag Art to Heal campaign. And so what? Among many things, fashion is what I've been doing. And so what have we done in fashion plus, oh, that's COVID-19, that's supposedly COVID-19. So fashion and COVID-19. Uh, here's an image of a young kid. Uh, I guess this was in, um, in China where they, were, they started to use uh, recyclables because uh, there was that sudden uh, surge of demand for face shields and face masks. And so I was so inspired by this that I created, I was so inspired about how do we make face masks and face shields still fashionable because we are already covering much of our faces. Now with that, how could we still be creative or how could we still show our individuality with so much Zoom calls or going into the grocery run or doing grocery runs and having to cover our face, how do we still keep ourselves fashionable? And so I, I have all of these uh, stocks of fabrics, uh, pure Milan, Paris, uh, Tokyo silks. And so I realized, hey, I could create some very fashionable limited edition uh, face mask and face shields. And so these are the uh, the turbans that I was able to make. And so here we have now our, our turbans and face mask, limited edition turbans and face mask. And they, they were very well received by the public. Uh, I realized that if we could come, if we are going to cover our faces, might as well cover them in very high fashion way, in high fashion, method, uh, high fashion way. And when we go to the grocery, we could have that, oh, boom, I, I'm still pretty. I'm still that, I'm with, the, with just my eyes right there and with covered by the turban and face mask, then I could still do something that is fashionable while being, while following 
health protocols. What is important with our to heal campaign is our ability to give back is our mission or our goal of using art and fashion towards our communities. And so here's and so all, all our sculptural fabrics, sculptural turbans and face masks, they all contribute to our art to heal campaign where right now we have we have successfully uh, provided food or food on the table on 3,600 families since the start of the pandemic. And that is all because of, all, of our Art to Heal program or our Art to Heal campaign. Whatever proceeds that we have because of our creative uh, works, we have this Art to Heal campaign helping families because of, of uh, families that have been affected financially because of, of this COVID pandemic. So these are families working in cemeteries. And because of the lockdown, families are no longer able to go to their um, uh, deceased loved ones. And so these families working in cemeteries who clean tombs, uh, they lost their, their jobs. And these are families that nor normally we don't see on day-to-day -day basis. And so we tend to forget about them. And so they were our they were much of our uh, beneficiaries of our Art to Heal campaign. And so from those fashionable items, turbans and face masks, we now go to our sculptures. We still continue creating sculptures. Uh, these sculptures are inspired by how we bloom from this pandemic, how we are able, from the darkness, how do we shine our light? And so how do we find ourselves growing out of this experience. And so because of these sculptures, we were able to, these sculptures were sold in, in partnership with, uh, uh, with the subdivision in Consolacion Cebu uh, with Ms. Krina Escobarte, we worked together and the proceeds of these sculptures and also these, the proceeds of Courage Cebu uh, all these works are work, works of art. The proceeds went to fund uh, families as well as well, and purchase of PPEs for our health workers. For example, these uh, drawings of mine uh, or uh, pen drawings were used to to generate funds for the families and for the purchase of PPEs. And so, much of what we do or much of what we were doing. In order for us to be to stay creative, we had to think about what is happening and how could our art contribute to the, our society as a whole. While inspired by the the darkness that we've had, we've been experiencing much last year. The darkness from last year. How do we bloom out of it? How do we how do we grow from this experience? And so I was very much inspired. By, by, this, by this journey of growth during COVID. Because a lot of us tend to, a lot of our lives were disrupted. But then I felt as an artist, how could I make myself realize or let others realize that we could actually grow and bloom out of this experience. And so much of, of working together with Courage Cebu and Ms. Krina Escobarte, the works of the works that I did for them were all about growth and blooming and shining light amidst the darkness of the pandemic. And so we were able to send uh, fresh produce to families and help purchase PPEs for, for our frontline workers as well. And we're very much happy with that. And so we were also working with, with the Singapore International Foundation with three pumpkins for our hashtag stay home quilt project and we were also working with with um creatives against covid19 from from london uh, from a creative team in london so we were working with singapore and london in creating digital art and so what we did with singapore international foundation again a lot of our beneficiaries we had to look at 
sectors in our society or populations in our society that we tend not to really think about during the pandemic. And so working with Three Pumpkins, with Jimmy Ong as the main artist in Singapore, we worked with the migrant workers. There was a time in Singapore where a huge population of migrant workers were hit by COVID-19. And so we had to work with them and to let them realize that they are essential part of society. And so we worked with them to create quilts. And so they were quilting. So they were quilting actual quilts. They were doing all these messages for their families, messages for the government, for, for society, through quilts, or recycled and repurposed fabrics. And so we were so inspired by them. And so with all those images of quilts that these migrant workers made out of their stories or how they felt during the pandemic, we created, we worked with young creatives in the Philippines. We worked with young artists in the Philippines on creating, transforming these images of quilts into digital art, digital works of art. And so from, we took pictures of the quilts and then made collage out of them and then a collage of digital art made by young artists in the Philippines and curated by, by me and um, Lin Xian of Singapore. And so it was amazing because the young artists here in Cebu working with the, with the quilts uh, from the migrant workers in Singapore were able to create messages about thanking the kids for staying home, thanking the frontline workers or the health workers for, for protecting us. And as well as, uh, this is a digital art that I made. Um, it is more about uh, fashion as well and, and, and how society has allowed us to remain alive by keeping at home, how we have to stay home in order to help our society. And I guess you heard my dog. Anyhow, and so we also uh, paid tribute to our, to our uh, uh, grandparents who are one of the most vulnerable populations during this pandemic. And so using the quilts by our migrant workers, we created, I created this digital art inspired by our, our grandparents or our, our, the very much, uh, let's say vulnerable, the most vulnerable populations during this um, pandemic. Um, and then um, amongst all these, I had to go back to COVID-19. And so back during the start of the pandemic, I actually created abstract paintings inspired by the virus. Um, it was quite, during December, 2020, when I heard, when I first heard about uh, COVID-19, actually, well, January 2020, sorry, January 2020, 2020, when I first heard about the COVID-19, I then started to research about it. There was, there were very little articles that were being released, but then there were already some news, because uh, I was in China uh, December of 2019. I was in China in December of 2019. And so there were already some very little uh, hush uh, stories going around. And so I was curious about it in January 2020 and in February. And so I created this uh, abstract, this series of abstract paintings that was inspired by, by the virus itself. And so I created the, these abstract paintings of how the, the arms or the arms of this virus would be, which is the cause of it clinging to the healthy human cells. And so I was very curious about it. And so I created these abstract paintings of, of viruses. And I dedicated this series with the actual COVID-19 um, virus itself or, or the um, NCOV, uh, the, 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 the virus that caused COVID-19 pandemic. I'm so curious about it. 
And so it could be it could be challenging. It could be very challenging for artists, for designers, because we are deemed to be part of a sector that does not directly work with um, public health. And so we are, we tend to be considered as um, uh, non-essential. Uh, however, we have to rethink of our purpose being artists or being designers, our purpose of being part of society. And so I've, I've always been a strong advocate of using art towards creating conversations, or evoking emotions within our society. And how do we work with our creativity to reflect what is happening in these modern times in, in our society? And so as artists and designers, we have to constantly rethink or ask people or create works that make people ask questions about how could they also contribute to our society. And these are digital works that we were, that we released with a, in partnership with, with the London-based uh, creatives against COVID-19. And so I would like to end us with this a uh, little quote that says, in every crisis, doubt or confusion, take the higher path. And that is the path of compassion, courage, understanding, and love. A lot of people are in pain right now. And so the best thing that we could do is to, is to work with compassion and with understanding because a lot of, a lot of people need it nowadays. And so this has been Francis Liano and this has been my journey as a creative and my team of Francis Liano creative team on how we have worked with our projects to stay creative and stay relevant within our society while making sure we contribute to the growth and to the survival of our populations, of our people. Thank you so much everyone. And yep, that was it. Hi, okay, uh, we're done, no? So Sir Francis, first of all, thank you for, for sharing your story, your work to us. I know that uh, there's, there's a lot of people, a lot of people are inspired by your work. And then secondly, I, I think I, I, will, I won't get tired of saying this, no? I'm just amazed, not just because I personally, I personally love art, fashion and art, but to the fact that uh, you're not only doing this for yourself, but you are you also have this mission to give back. You successfully provide food on the table to, um, to those families in need, families who are greatly affected financially uh, because of this pandemic. And not also, not only that, you continue to um, raise awareness, Sad, um, in the, to this pandemic through your art. And Sir Francis, Yes, I prayed. Hello. Hello. How are you? Where are you now? Where are you right now, sir? Um, I'm actually in SN City to do. Uh and yeah, we are actually on site here. We're doing our project right now. Uh as you can see, um so uh that's Yuka, one of my team members. So right there. So we're currently doing art as we speak at we're live here with Rafi wow. and then in the SMJ to do. Yes, <laughs> caught in the act. Yes, mayong hapon kanatong tanan and good afternoon. Uh, thank you for your kind words, Fred. Uh, thank you for the invitation as well. No, thank you, sir. Thank you. So, dili, dili, before we'll um we'll we'll proceed to the Q and A, sir. No, um to the to our audience's questions. Dili ko pa, dili ko pa huli. <laughs> so I have a question, oh. myself, sir. Um, what yes, inspired sure. you to start the Art to Heal campaign? Oh, what inspired us? Uh, well, definitely the the thing that struck me most was that I'm I'm quite happy to be privileged in some way, but then we were very much always attuned with the with the sector of society that does not 
that do not have the same as we do. And so part in YLC has always been about helping others, which is also what Graffiti has been doing. And so Art to Heal was conceived because of our desire to be able to help people. Uh, even going out from our house, we would see a lot of uh, a lot of people suffering because of the financial loss. And in fact, a lot of people are messaging me, uh, uh, so uh, we're not a multi-million or multi-billion company, but then I guess we could always do something on our little share. And so that was, uh, that was how art to heal was conceived, yes. Yeah, that's that is very inspiring, sir. You know, I know that we've we've all experienced uh, tough times in our lives, but but most of us have never witnessed anything as impactful and all encompassing as this pandemic. You no, know, like kalit kalit and then grabbing na walay walay na prepare actually in the midst of yeah, like true. tough times like this, horrific times like this. It just warms our heart how people rise up and want to help. We 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 give uh, we give back because it teaches us to uh, somehow to find that compassion within ourselves, you no, know, and to stay attached to the values that are are linked to the common good. So you know, you know, it's very true. <laughs> we also have uh, another question here. Um, how do you keep your creativity flowing amidst the uh, the distractions today? Ah, okay. Uh, one thing for sure, I try to detach myself from from uh, from the negativity in social media or wherever else. Uh, I try to go back to nature and then to recharge myself. Uh, that's why I always go uh, find some place that is quiet and then just to recharge my my my, my energy. Uh, second is that I try to detach myself from oh, well from the negativity in itself. And by doing so, I am able to 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 let out all those energy that is not necessary in my head, and bring in all that is something that could be beneficial uh, within the within my capacity as an artist. And so I try to let let go of the thoughts that are negative, and then suck in whatever is positive within my sphere. So I go back to nature always. Um, it's difficult, Karen, to go to the beach, but then um, if you can, then please follow um, health protocols, especially in a start of summer. <laughs> so yes, so um, that's how I try to keep myself creative. And also I do sketch all the time. I'm not the best uh, person in drawing, but then I try to sketch almost every day. I also try to read every day. Uh, every morning um, when I wake up, uh, before the sun rises, uh, I try to listen to nice music para ma energize ang head. So, yeah, sketching, getting to nature, uh, listening to music, may na ng ating, and then listening to, uh, getting a lot of positive thoughts. Yes, uh, correct. Really diba? easy all the time. Yeah. In order Serpent, to, yeah? to, 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 to keep to keep positive mind sometimes we just yes. need, in short but we just need to take a break take a breather uh yes. return to yes. those yes. things uh, that will inspire you you know it you know it we have another question here sir because can i don't know can i actually you're caught on act right now you're in sm doing an exhibit yes uh, we're doing um a large mural here uh one uh, a pretty large mural for smcp cebu uh, yeah, it's also sponsored by our partners. Uh, part of the proceeds of this will also go to our Art to Heal campaign. Yes. Uh, sorry, I'm the question, no? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So, the ang, ang question, sir, is that you're going to have a project. The ang question is, where do you get that energy to do so much of that time? To do all that time? <laughs> Uh, you, uh, well, actually, uh, that's a very good question because uh, Prince and um, and Jackie and the people behind the uh, the restart webinar series are very aware of kind of busy kaitano. So <laughs> we try to juggle as many projects as possible. How do I find the energy? Uh, uh, I do, or like, where do you I, find your inspiration, sir, to do your innovative work? Ah, inspiration, the eye, hala. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, well, love life is out of the question, so um, asa man tamo kita gin creation. Okay, uh, you know, um, ma, well, wala char, but I'm always inspired 
by doing the best that I can because there are a lot of people looking up at me. Uh, I have a lot of students, uh, a lot of mentees that look up to me. And I believe that if I do my best in what I do, I'm always inspired by them because there are a lot of them who are also better than that, than than what I do. They're better than what I do. But then they look up to me because they know that it is something that the journey that I have is a journey that they also want to have. And so I always get my inspiration from them. In fact, I have a lot of mentees that are better in painting than I am, but then I am inspired by them. And so I try to do better in my craft. So maraging anana siguro, give and take siyang uh, process, uh, symbiotic siyang uh, relationship. Charot. So, yeah. <laughs> Dili to charot, sir. That's um, <laughs> Right. Right, right, yes. What is your takeaway message that you would like to give to everyone who is um, tuning in right now? Mm. Oh, that's a very good question because there are a lot of messages that we could share. And I'm pretty sure na there are also, uh, you know, it's very difficult during these times. You know, uh, we can't, really, uh, in fact, this morning, early morning, like, uh, five in the morning, I was already driving and I've already seen kanang mga employees going to their work stranded because we uh, a proper commute transport and we have very little uh, public uh, transportation right now. And these are uh, people that we need to be helping. And so my message would always be find the best version of yourself, not because of your personal uh, uh, personal agenda rather because your life is bigger than who you are it's always for the good of others the good of the society the good for their community Ako, uh, on my end i am trying to be a good artist because i want to be able to help others so Iko, um you're in rafi do the best that you can do because you are doing it not for yourself but maybe because for your family for 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 others or to those people watching right now, to the students, to the accountants, to the nurses, to the doctors, or 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 mang limpio sa sa SM, be the best on your end because you know that it it goes beyond yourself. You're feeding someone. You are living yourself for others. So yeah, yeah. That's I hope it made sense. Sorry, to ask you a chica. <laughs> Nothing humble question right now, no, because um, someone someone got inspired and really interested to join your mission or the campaign you have oh, yeah. right now. So, do you accept but the volunteer? I mean, there are skilled people who want to help or want to share their talent for it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, yuka, yuka. Are you good? Quick, quick, quick. So, yes, we are very much open to volunteers. We are very much open to young adults to creative. Uh, this is Yuka and um, Nesfi. Uh, say hi. Uh, so they are also doing uh, the mural and the, the mural right here. And they are also volunteering for YLC on some of our events. They've also volunteered. In fact, uh, they, they, they were able to sell some of their work or they were able to work, do on projects that part of the proceeds went to YLC to do our project in, in yeah. So thank you. So yeah, that's it. Yes, we we accept volunteers. Uh, you can just contact us directly. Use for the Google community. Sir, for those people yes. who who wants to volunteer, where where they can um like message you or reach you? Uh, yeah, uh, you could just uh, send me a direct message in my Facebook, uh, Francis Soliano Tan, or in our Facebook page, Francis Soliano, or Facebook page of Youth for Livable Communities, or we could always work with Rafi all the time. So, yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, Sir Francis. So, I think um, that's all our wala na tayo mga pahabol questions out there. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you, Sir No. I am I personally got inspired, no? And then thank you again for sharing your your story, your work, your experience. I know that um, a lot of us right now that who are tuning right now to, to this talk gain insights and especially inspiration uh, from this talk. So I hope everyone know, I hope everyone uh, you enjoyed today's session and would like to know what you thought. So please take time to answer our evaluation form so we can make our 
future episodes even better. So we're just gonna comment. Uh, we're just gonna post um, the evaluation link on the comment section. So I'd like to thank you all for watching this afternoon's episode of Restart. If you've enjoyed this research series, don't worry, we will be back with a lineup of uh, new interesting topics. If you want Sir Francis Ngamu to speak again for research, just let <laughs> <me> know <laughs> available <laughs> for us, especially. Yeah, we will <laughs> we will make ourselves available. Yeah, if, if you have any other questions, just comment on the on the live feed. And then I'll be able to see and then answer them back. So thank you. Salamat Thank you yes. so much. So in line with Rafi's vision, touching people, shaping the future, we hope that our session today you know, has made you more aware of what we can do amidst um, this COVID, this pandemic. And um, I hope you can move forward. We can move forward confidently into the new normal. Thank you so much for joining for joining uh, today's episode. And remember everyone to, to stay safe because um, well, well restrictions right now are being lifted in some uh, places. COVID-19 COVID isn't, isn't gone yet. So we must continue to protect ourselves and each other. If you will go out, uh, don't, don't forget to wear your mask, your, your face shield. Don't forget to um, bring your hand dandy alcohol and sanitizer sanitizers with you and of course always remember always remember that this tansha is good gugma good afternoon everyone and thank you murada kog monster Na nagsulob sa akong mask Ki fine whatever Wala ko na bother Kay ang doctor na ang nag-ask If there's one thing you can do To protect the one you love Wear a mask na iyong kumpiyansa A mask. Wear a mask, I am